Continuing. So I want to finish my sentence. I failed to do what I said in the sense that I was going to not pontificate at the first part of the uh, video series today. But, um, of course, I failed, failed myself. Nobody to hold me accountable. I tell you, a man is not right without a woman, okay? Even the Bible says that. It's not good. I, 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 I'm absolutely 100% positive. I will never have my head fully together until I have a beloved. Okay, I need that. As much time as I've spent as a single man, it's been kicking and screaming inside my heart the whole time. I was very much in love when my wife decided to call it quits. Hell, I'd take her back to this day, and that's pretty out there. That's pretty delusional. Okay, we're going. I, I, it's embarrassing to say how long it's been since we were together, but it's who I am. That's how I feel. We're all different when it comes to love, and uh, God knows. I mean, you know, Lauren. Hey, you. You ever want a date, girl? I'm still nobody's latched themselves onto me yet. You know, like I said, I'm very picky. You're the kind of girl I know. All the guys wanted in high school. Well, you know what? few girls had their eye on me too so I, I know that one we both probably know that one and uh, you're adorable and uh, I absolutely know we're compatible I can tell because you'll run the show the way it's supposed to be okay that's the way I believe it is it's, the woman is the more powerful of the genders so uh, they have the power to extinct the species Hell, if men had to have babies, it wouldn't be any babies. So I've got the greatest respect for females, and I don't violate women. And uh, uh, I'm a teddy bear. I'm not a threat to any female at all, ever, and under any circumstances. So, but if you want to give me a date, uh, you know, I'm st I still think about you a lot, and... Um, I hope Joe's doing good. Say hi to Joe. But you've got my phone number, and just leave a little message. I'll probably recognize your voice and call you back. But, um, you know, I promise not to stalk you or hound you. I mean, I'm very sensitive to those things. I'm very intuitive. I've grown a lot in that regard since my marriage. And if I had been the man I am now, I believe me, uh, I'd still be with my wife. But... Um, you grow, you know, you go through things and you become a better person if you're on the right track in life. So I'm a lot better person. I'm a lot better catch now than ever before in my life. And it just keeps growing. So if you want a date, give me a call. And I apologize to all the other or any other listeners if there are any out there. I don't know. I don't check any social media. I... A very, I, I'll leave comments, and sometimes, you know, if I feel like it's somebody that's enjoying their comments, but you know what? I'm not accepting comments. I mean, I just don't read them. I'm just completely off Facebook and all that stuff. I've just gotten kind of removed. Too much stress for me. You know, that's why. So the only thing I do is put out this video series, and I don't you know how long I'll be doing it, maybe the rest of my life, as long as God gives me breath in my lungs. I've got to serve him in some capacity. It's, only, it's the best way I serve humanity. By extension, you see, serving God and serving humanity goes hand in hand. You know, by default position, you, you know, you do one, you're doing the other. It's, and you're serving yourself too. You see, if you want to be happy, then you've got to serve. you got to do something. So what I do for money and what I do in service to God and man are two entirely different things. And we should all kind of look at, at our work that way and how we serve humanity. I mean... You know, this is why I understand the volunteer mentality. I get that. I've done a lot of volunteering in my life, and I'd like to do more. I'd like to be filling potholes. I even bought the tools needed to do it, packing a pot pothole packer, you know. But any equipment, safety equipment, cones and safety vest and hard hat, all those sorts of things. So I could do it safely, and I'm willing to give my time, okay, but... The just the the pothole repair mix, 
you wouldn't believe how much it cost. I mean, just to do like a, a tenth of a mile is like a thousand bucks just with the potholes on my little street. If I just, you know, the way I usually turn is that direction. It goes both ways. But if I turn one direction, I mean, it's immediate potholes everywhere. And since we started this gas tax a few years ago, the roads have just completely become dilapidated, falling apart everywhere. I mean, I don't know what these pothole repair guys are doing with all this money. May, you know, maybe they say, well, we'll fix them near our houses because we got to drive that route. But other than that, and we'll, the, the routes we take to the grocery store or the mall, or we might fix, you know, I don't know how it works. I mean, maybe I'm being overly cynical. They probably, you know, the average road work guy doesn't get a choice. It's coming from the higher ups and the echelons of power of the, you know, the highway department, right? I don't know, you know, then you got, you, it's different districts, right? So city, we got the city and then you got the county and, you know, it's all their money. Oh, it's got to come out of our coffers? Oh, well, we don't have it. You know, we haven't gotten the gas tax yet. I don't know how it works. Well, we got to give ourselves raises first. I mean, you want, you, you want your public servants to be well taken care of, right? So that's how these politicians work. They give themselves raises. It, it's sickening. It, the entire system, I'm telling you, it's a mess. Muddied, bloodied waters up one side, down the other, and to the nth degree. It, it's evil. The, the days are evil. On a local level, don't blame anybody on a local level. All this crap is emanating from on high. Remember, the uppermost echelons of, on, in this perverted pyramid of power, okay? That's the top Congress and Senate, the top politicians, often the executive, and it's the money printers. I'm not talking, when I talk about the bankster class, I'm not talking about your local credit union or bank. Okay, they're just, we're all cats of the cradle for these people at the top. You understand? We're their kittens. They're, you know, they, it's like, well, we decide. You know, if there's going to be austerity in the land, we decide because we control the purse strings. They have this wanton, vast, satanic power over the masses. And that's how they're controlling us. This is why they want us divided, to believe that the problem is if you could just get a Democrat in there long enough, if you could just get a Republican in there long enough, if you could just get a liberal in there long enough, if you could just get a conservative in there long enough, if you could just get a socialist in there long enough, if you could just get a capitalist in there long enough. They, that's what they want us to believe. They're very cunning. They're diabolical. They're sinister. Do you understand how they work there? It's three-card Monty, and they don't want you to be knowledgeable. Knowledge is power. And they don't want the public in power. They don't want the masses empowered with the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. They want you to reject that as, oh, it hurts my head. Um, don't, don't you know? I, I'm into blissful ignorance. That's the philosophy I prescribe. So just go away. Stop proselytizing me. You see what I mean? I'm scared. I'm, we're in a lot of trouble. The people I'm after are those that don't know that they're evil, okay? But they are. Just because they're not living within the bounds God gave us, the golden rule. These two new commandments is all we have to do. Live by the spirit of the law, not the letter of the law. The letter of the law will destroy all of us. It's just love God above all else. It's as simple as that, Jesus said. Then love one another as yourselves, like I loved you, unconditionally. Agape love. Just pour it out. Pour it out. The way you want to be loved and thought of and you know all the just it's a reciprocation thing it's a flowing it's a spirit it's an attitude and you know in your business affairs you can't you can't draw lines and say well it stops here the buck stops here where i say it does because god god will understand i mean i need money i mean what did king solomon say about that a man that doesn't take care of his own is worse than an infidel Right. So, I mean, even a lot of these decent Christian men, they're evil in their heart. And they don't know it because they're not remembering what Jesus said when he said, whatsoever you do or fail to do for the least of men. OK, what do you kids? So many people leave their their inheritance or children as if, well, what did they do for it? How, how do they have any claim to it? Why doesn't it go right back to the Federal Reserve, the Treasury, to the government? I mean, if that's where all the money came from, like Jesus said, you know, pay your taxes to Caesar because they tried to trap him. And, oh, Jesus is trying to evade taxes because and, and, he said, you know, he said, well, whose inscription is on the coin? Caesar's, they said. Well, I'm rendered to Caesar with a Caesar. Give to God what is God's. But everything Caesar has is God's already. So it's like Jesus was so far above their heads that 
You understand? And you got to really try to understand this. That's why Jesus talked in parables. See, only those that really hunger and thirst for the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth will find it. Okay? And then it all makes sense. God will help you to make sense out of the senseless. This mad, 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 mad world. I mean, look at this coronavirus thing. What the... What, this is changing humanity, the whole civilization. Why? This is in history books forevermore. This is huge. And I haven't talked about it once this whole time because I'm kind of removed. I'm thinking, I'm starting to see through this. This is starting to stink to high heavens. We've got like 25 counties here in Northern California. It's like we've had a couple of hundred cases, some counties zero cases. I mean, more people must be dying right and left from other things. And I'm supposed to be freaked out about this thing. And then the governors talk about closing beaches. Uh, why? I mean, I was looking at the images. They're spread out more than the grocery stores. They allow people to pass side by side in the grocery stores. How much distance is there between those aisles? You know you're getting within two feet of people. And this is, well, you have to do it. So what? People need recreation. They need sunlight. Vitamin D. They got to go to the beach and sunbathe. So, Governor, I don't recommend you get draconian. It's un-American crapola. Okay, I mean, you know, so I, I you, we got a thing called the Constitution in America. Thank God. Okay, I'm so lucky to have been born in America. You see, I mean, I'm so outspoken. I mean, where else could I have been born? And and, and people not, oh my God, consternation. Oh, how dare you speak out against the government that way you do and all this. And, Look, this is a juggernaut of pure evil genius, okay? We're up against freaking literal monsters, okay? That's who they are. And we've got to get serious. What, what they're crying for and screaming for, what they need more than anything else is to be disciplined. They need parental-like discipline. And it's up to you. I mean, if it doesn't happen, then it's our own fault. We're not, it's our choice, to not parent these people, but that's what's got to be done. So somebody that's got a higher position than me, I mean, this is the way it's got to work. we got to move up the echelon and tell them what's what and say, look, no, no. We know what you're doing. We know how you, this is neo-feudalism. It's a kleptocracy. It's like fascism. It's not capitalism. It's anti-capitalism. It's like some, the worst mutant form of communism. They're ganging up. I mean, a monopoly. Yeah, what happens when you got people colluding together in different industries? How is that different? That's far worse than one single monopoly you can single out. These people know what they're doing. I mean, they got us divided, and it's just they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. This wealth imbalance, and we're accepting this crap. They'll have us in a third, fourth world status. They don't know. They're out of control. They don't know. They're drunk. They're power drunk freaks running the show. And I hate that the Labor Department's been in on it for half a century or more. They have not given realistic commensurate cost of living adjustments. Housing is an essential human need. And all these idiots and liars, disingenuous people out there, touting how good higher housing values are, you're evil, and I want you to know it. I'm sorry if that that you, that repels you. Okay, I'm sorry, but you got to look in a mirror, and face the truth, hold truth, and nothing but the truth. I'm your best friend. On Judgment Day, man, your belief system better hold water. This finances are very important to God. In order for the captives to be set free, they must be set financially free. And true capitalism would lead that direction. It would create a rising tide of prosperity that would lift all ships. End of story. It wouldn't lift some ships to the highest heavens while it swamped other ships. But that's exactly what's going on here. And it just get, it keeps getting more and more growing, more and more acute, deadly, lethal. It's killing people now. Do you understand? People losing their will to live. High suicide rate, homelessness, people dying as a result of that. Their immune systems break down. They die of exposure to the elements. It's dangerous. It's a, it's a violation of health and human safety, okay? We're the laughing stock of the planet. My Palestinian fr friend puts me to shame. There's no homelessness in Palestine. He's proudly. 
pump his chest up at me, idiot American. And then next one, I'm criticizing America because everybody knows I'm a great dissenter. I'm a great, great patriotic American. You never find a guy more patriotic than me, more grateful to be born an American and cherish the Constitution and the Bill of Rights anymore. Be proud of the, our history as Americans, except for these dubious wars we get involved in. And you know the ones. I'm not going to start listing them. But then as soon as I start, you know, talking about this stuff and he's, oh, you know, like as if the FBI is listening and they're going to deport me if I say anything against America. But, you know, I mean, it's justifiable, constructive criticism. That's the dissent I'm talking about here. I'm not going to go along with this. I am no yes man. I'm a real friend to America. Who is America? It's you. It's me. If I'm talking to Americans, it's you. We got big shoes to fill. We got a big responsibility.